put together a little slideshow and this slideshow just gives us a glimpse of what's happening in War 27. So welcome everyone. Welcome to Downtown Young. I'm Kristen Wong Tam, your city councillor, and for those who are visiting our neighbourhoods, welcome to Ward 27. It's really great to see so many people out tonight. I know that it's a very busy evening, and I am very sure that there are many conflicting scheduled events, but I'm thrilled that you've been able to take a little bit of time to join us this evening. I want to thank Richard and his staff at Just Desserts for hosting us. It's wonderful to have you. Take care of us, Richard. Thank you. And we specifically chose this restaurant because it's wheelchair accessible. And for us, it's really important to make sure that all our venues are wheelchair accessible, especially as we get to the timeline of 2025, when all commercial facilities, all government facilities should be wheelchair accessible. So we want to take take a, a head start on that and so there aren't that many businesses that do uh, that can accommodate wheelchairs so this is one of them so we're really pleased to be here um, I want to just talk a little bit about the War 27 City Builders Award if I can I won't take too much time talking about it because I want to get right to the award winners there is so much that happens in War 27 and I know that people are really connected to their neighborhoods and there are 14 distinct residential neighborhoods in our ward with five business improvement areas. So this is a really busy place. We also get to house two universities plus a whole host of hospitals along University Avenue. This is actually the seat of government is here from Old City Hall to New City Hall to the Ontario Legislative Assembly, it is here. It's also a ward that is so rich in natural green resources from the beautiful ravines in Rosedale and Moore Park and to all the amazing um, things that are happening in downtown communities such as the dynamic shopping entertainment districts that we have. This is all wedged into a tiny sliver of land of what is very large Toronto. Now, I know that our city has been making headlines, international headlines, <laughs> perhaps not for the best reasons. And and you know, as we were working in our in our office about all the things that were that we were hearing that people were were saying about Toronto, the things that we don't do well, and what well, where we sit in our work with communities, we're saying, but that's not our experience. When we walk through the neighborhoods and we see people in, in the streets, they're brimming with optimism. They love this city and they love their communities. And so we want to take an opportunity to reflect on the things that we've done well and things that have been championed by communities large and small across the ward. And so we had a call. We sent out an, a nomination notice and said, hey, let us know who you think in your communities that have made a big difference. People who have transformed your neighborhood and people who have given timeless and, 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 uh, and generously to community efforts and neighborhood building. What we didn't expect was the flood of nominations. We said, send us everything that you can in, in 200 words, and I can tell you, people are not good at editing. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much crammed in there. Our, my, you know, we took our time to read it, and the staff were just combing through all of it, and it was really, really hard, because so much was happening. So um, what you're gonna see tonight is, is an accumulation of all that. 14 heroes celebrated in War 27 in 2014. And I want to tell you that the work is transformative. It's not just transformative by making people's lives better, it's actually transformative because it's actually transforming the streets and the neighborhood. And you're going to get to see all that. So I want to start off with award winner number one. And I know that there's there's a few uh, press, uh, press here, here, the media is here. And before I begin that, I actually, because I think they're going to slip out, but I want to acknowledge that mayoral candidate and my personal friend John Tory is here. And John, I don't know where you are, but I think you're still at the back. He's right there. So everyone say hi to John Tory. Thank you, John, for taking the time. I know you're super busy on the campaign trail. And, uh, and the fact that you came out to our little neighborhood event, it means a lot. And uh, Chris Moyes is here. Chris Moyes is running for school trustee, the district school trustee board. And he's right beside me. 
So, I don't know if there's any other candidates here who are here. Do I need to acknowledge anyone else? No? Okay. It's a thing that politicians do. We acknowledge each other. So, okay. So, I want to start off by announcing award winner number one. This is our hero, our first hero of the night. David Townley and Ray Cowling from the South Rosedale Ratepayers Rate Residents Association. Both David Townley and Ray Cowling have championed and designed the execution of the Gates of South Rosedale project. For those who've been in the neighborhood, you've probably seen these gateways pop up right on Crescent Row. Ray Cowling is out of town tonight, so he's not able to join us, but David is here. But Ray has been a very generous, very generous contributor to the community. And it was through his work and his efforts and his foundation and through the leadership and the, and the persistent advocacy of David Townley, our president, our longtime serving president of South Rosedale, that we got this done. And so now when you walk into the community in Rosedale, what you'll see are these beautiful gateways that welcome you. And it was not done as a City of Toronto project. This was a community-led project, and that's what makes it so special. So so I want to invite David to the stage, and anybody else who's here from South Rosedale, please join him. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you to South Rosedale Residents Association. Anyone who's ever worked on a capital project touching the city roads will know that that was no small endeavor. So, I also want to thank and bring up some very special people. Now, you know, the things that make our community great, large and small, and there, there's some big ones and there's some small ones, but every now and then there's a group that takes on a giant. Now this next group, I want to describe them to you because they have not taken on a small project. They're, they're taking on some, some powerhouses. And, um, and these folks are called Friends of Toronto Public Cemeteries. And there are four dynamic women here. And it's actually, it's a, it's a primarily women-led initiative. So go figure, Lorraine Tinsley, Margot Boyd, Deborah Cowan, Pamela Taylor. I want to tell you what they have been doing because this is something that is very special and we don't see this type of community effort all the time and I want to specifically highlight the work that they're doing because like South Rosedale, they're leading the charge. The Friends of Toronto Public Cemeteries have been an incredible force in the Moore Park community and they've been tireless advocates for healthier neighborhood and transparency in the government of governance of public assets. As volunteers, they have amassed an incredible amount of research on the risks and health impacts of crematoriums. Through their advocacy, I've able to I have been able to encourage City Council, because they were advocating me to do the same, um, we were able to work together and bring together a new bylaw, a new zoning bylaw that would require that all new crematoriums be 300 meters away from residential neighborhoods. First time ever. 300 meters, the crematorium has to be away from residential neighborhoods. The residents of Moore Park live next to a crematorium that's in existence right now, and it's only 20 meters away. So they've been able to defend neighborhoods into the future. So Friends of Toronto Public Cemeteries then challenged the Ministry of the Environment to prevent the installation of new incinerators. And together they filed an appeal to the Environmental Tribunal Review Board. It's complicated, right? This is not this is not small stuff. They didn't they didn't they didn't pick a low project. They again spent countless hours trying to amass more information. This is all volunteer time. They're doing it on their own dime to try to bring about awareness about the health impacts of crematoriums in, in cities and they lost that battle. Now what they're doing, because they, they don't give up, now what they're doing is trying to increase the transparency around the governance around the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Is it a public asset? Does it belong to the people? And if it does, then don't we get to see those records? Shouldn't we be choosing the board of directors? That is the work and advocacy of residents in Moore Park in War 27. So Lorraine, Margot, Deborah, and Pamela, please join me here. Thank you.
This is for the media. Okay, look this way and beam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now I'd like to call up Andre Go because you don't want to see me all night. Uh, Andre is the chair of the Asian Community Aid Services, and he has a very special award to hand out. And after Andre will be Catherine Holden from the Bay Clover Hill Community Association. So come close to, the, to this mock stage. Thanks, mock stage. Thanks Kristen. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Andre. I'm here to present the award to Anda Lee. Um, Anda has been an amazing leader in the East and Southeast Asian communities for the last 25 years here in our city. Long before Toronto the diverse, Toronto the multicultural, Anda was there doing work. Her primary focus has always been around promoting the rights of women and equality for women here in the city, especially in those communities. One of the most phenomenal things that she did was co-founded a group that basically taught parents immigrant parents from East and Southeast Asian communities how to speak to your children about sex education. She then branched this out to the South Asian community and beyond. Today she works with 13 different communities. So without further ado, please welcome Anda Lee. Give us a big smile. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Andre. Andre is also the diversity manager at the Toronto Police Service, so he also does fantastic work along with Anda. And now I have Catherine Holden from the BCCA who's going to be presenting an award. Uh, good evening, everyone. I really am a little bit dumbfounded here tonight. I had this message from Kristen's office saying, can you make sure Norm Waite gets to this meeting? And can you provide a, a minute of, uh, of uh, revelation about Norm? And so Norm's here, unless he escaped. And uh, my moment of revelation, I, I'm really happy to ask my husband John to do that. And so he's going to tell you just a few things about Norm. Norm is an excellent community worker. Catherine asked me to do this because she cannot read notes. <laughs> and that's a vision problem. Norm has a vision problem too. He's colorblind. But he is a man of vision. And he became involved in 2007, which means he has persistence. Originally with the U condo development, he's been long retired, but he certainly isn't short on energy. He's a historian, but a man of modern ideas. And he's an excellent public speaker. Norm has certainly been part of the BCCA in a significant way since 2007, either as a member or an executive member. To name a few of the projects he's been involved with, he, he en helped engineer the change in name from Bay Corridor Association to Bay Cloverhill Community Association, the creation of the current BCCA logo, logo the um, constitution of the BCCA, their website, the development on Bay Street of the Bioswale. In short, he's a community builder. So Norm, thank you for all you've contributed. We're glad you called the BCCA home. You have truly earned this award. Give us a smile, Norm. 
Over here, please. Thanks. No, Oh, could I get your seat? Well, Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Actually, one more, please. Oh. No. There. Popular okay. guy. <laughs> That's Norm Wade from the Bay Clover Hill Community Association. If you like the transformation of Bay Street, you can thank Norm for that because he's been advocating for those bile swales, which are those double row of planted trees that are now starting to pop up on Bay Street. So if you think Bay Street's looking a little bit greener than it has, you can thank him and the BCCA. I almost ran to a plate of hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> okay, so um, now this is a really this is a really great organization, and uh, and I'll tell you again, it's about you know taking the power of community and channeling it into producing something fantastic. And uh, and this next organization is another resident association, and that's the North Rosedale Residents Association, and they have raised a significant amount of money and they built a new playground. It's not just any playground, it's a state-of-the-art playground, and I know that the president is here, and that's Lewis Redford. Now, there was a fantastic fundraising effort, and if you can imagine, it's not easy asking neighbors to dole out a little bit of cash to raise what should be publicly funded infrastructure. The city of Toronto should be paying for this, but the city didn't, and the community said, you know what? We're going to do it, and that's what they did. Michael Rogers contributed, Norman Murren, as well as Stephanie Thompson. They trapeze up and down the street. They harassed their neighbors. I'm not sure if they baked, had any bake sales, but what it, what it did was it actually brought valuable play space to the community kids a lot earlier. Now, we've been trying to build a playground in Allen Gardens. It's been three and a half years. I'm very embarrassed to say we still don't have our playground. So that these guys have their playground and we're getting there, we're on the other end. But uh, it is going to happen. But I can tell you that it would not have happened without the efforts of community leaders and community organizers like the North Rosedale Residents Association. And so after a consultation, after raising the money, that they had to work with the city staff. And the city staff said, okay, now that you've raised the, raised the money, we're going to manage the project. Then they had to navigate through the city bureaucracy, and they were so patient, they were fantastic to work with, and at the end of the day, I can tell you that it's a, one of the most spectacular playgrounds that we have, so please go visit it and, uh, and bring your kids, because there is water features, there's natural elements, there's play equipment, and lots of shade, and lots of seating for parents. So, um, will the North Rosedale Residents Association all come up? Or just Lewis? No, no, no. Hey, everybody. Okay. Wonderful. Give them a big round of applause. And I'll just recognize our, our past president, Lisa Conway, uh, who's with us here tonight as well. Um, and I think as, as the councillor said, you can't do anything uh, in this city unless you act in the spirit of partnership. And uh, we figured that out very, very quickly. We had a lot of fun designing this project. At the end of the day, the city staff did a very good job of execution. And although it took a little bit longer, I think anybody who's built anything understands the longer it takes, the better it becomes. And uh, we now have a great, we have a really great uh, uh, playground, and we'd love to um, share any of the best practices with any other neighborhood in, in Ward 27 to help get their projects over the finish line as well. And thank you very much, Kristen. It's a great uh, partnership we have. That's great. Thanks. Everybody face front and smile. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Okay. So now you're getting a, you're, I suspect you're getting a sense of what happens in War 27, right? This is actually a community in action. And uh, we don't want to slow any of that down, and uh, we want to keep it up, and we want you to keep going. So, now, I want to 
this next award winner is very special to me because I've actually had a chance to to work with him and uh, and and the work that he does. Um, Brian Kearney is not here, but let me tell you a little bit about Brian because I think he deserves special acknowledgement. Brian has been organizing the ecumenical Christmas food drive in our communities. And so what he does is he brings together the communities and through the churches and he organizes a food drive that p literally puts food onto the tables of needy families. And so he does this with the partnership of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, which is right off of, uh, of St. Clair. And, um, you know, it is not easy asking for food from, from families and trying to organize all this and bringing hundreds of volunteers and putting together what literally accumulates into delivering over 16,000 food items uh, to local food banks and agencies. And it makes the difference between thriving and surviving. And so I can tell you that, um, you know, although Brian's not here and, uh, and, and no one from the community, uh, from the organization could join us, I really wanted to still acknowledge him and, and, and just think about the blessings that we have because we're, we're, we're okay, we're doing okay. And when we think about how we can help others, we can channel the spirit of what Brian and his community have been doing to make sure that kids and families who are struggling have food to eat. So. If you get a call from us saying, hey, the food drive is on, right? You, you know what we're talking about. And, uh, and I have volunteered on a, on a number of occasions. It's a great amount of fun, and, uh, and it happens uh, once a year. So that's for Brian Kearney. Give it up for him. Okay, so it's going pretty fast. It's not as long as the Oscars, right? I mean, we didn't really walk the red carpet, but hey, you know what? I think this is really fun. And, uh, and I think it's really important that we continue to acknowledge people. I want to ask Ji Chung, who's the president of the Greater Yorkville Residents Association, to come here. And Jane, uh, sorry, oops, I just gave it away. <laughs> Ji, would you please come up to present an award? Okay. After G, uh, I'll be asking Dr. David Bruce to join us on on the make podium. makeup stage. On the podium. 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 To the microphone. On the podium. Okay. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to my good friend, historian Jane Beecroft. Now I have 90 seconds, so I'm going to have to be very, very fast. Uh, Jane has worked tirelessly in heritage throughout Ontario since the 1970s. In 1983, Jane founded Community History Project to study and protect historic areas, including Yorkville, the Annex, and Seaton Village. She created a cooperative the Society of Heritage Associates, which opened the CHP on Heritage Center, a public education museum and gallery. She studied Canada's oldest post Ice Age Road and its connecting Aboriginal trails. She collaborated with Gyra in the creation of the three Davenport Road panels installed in the Frank Stollery Parquet. The panels narrate the evolution of Davenport Road from ancient animal trail, rural road to urban thoroughfare. Canada's oldest road meets Canada's longest road at the intersection of Davenport and Yonk. In 1833, toll roads, toll roads raised revenue to build new roads. The Davenport route had five toll gates between the Humber and the Don River the first at Young and Bloor, and the fifth at Lampton. For the price of one dollar, Jane purchased Tollgate No. 3 Cottage, constructed of vertical planks around 1827, and with a team of dedicated volunteers, spent hundreds of hours painstakingly restoring the cottage, complete with period furnishings, artifacts, and a real ghost. Let's have a ghost. The cottage at ba Davenport and Bathurst operates as a museum explaining the evolution of roads and tolling systems in the province during the 19th century. Jane studied the Toronto transportation system. The first public transportation was established in Yorkville in 1849. Horse-drawn co stagecoaches clattered down Young Street on their way to the St. Horn. St. Lawrence Market. During winter months, horse-drawn sleighs would glide down Young Street. 
She collaborated with Gyra on the creation of two plaques located in front of Town Hall Square. The one describing the Yorkville Town Hall, built in 1860, and the other an 1878 map of the village of Yorkville. These are just a few of Jane's many accomplishments for which she was awarded the City of Toronto Award of Merit and the Ontario Medal of Good Citizenship. Historian Jane Beecroft and heritage architect William Greer are two of Yorkville's most precious heritage assets. Thank you, Jane. real inspiration. We met in 2010 and I felt like I had met a teacher and, uh, and I was right, our first meeting. Um, and since then I've been learning from her. Uh, okay, recipient number nine. We're getting, to the, we're getting to the 14, right? So recipient number nine. <coughs> Glenn Seymour. Yeah. From the Garden District Residents Association. And he's joined by family members and, and actually members from his church. Glenn's passion and commitment to his community and his church was evident from the first time I met him. He was a powerhouse. I had to sort of just stand and, and, and experience Glenn. And, uh, and he's been a tireless advocate and a tireless volunteer. And he's been a tireless neighborhood champion for the downtown east and the downtown east in Toronto represents so much of what is the best thing about the city and and Glenn is a big part of that in many ways I see him as the heart and soul of that community you know he has worked on issues that for most people will say okay it's been a year it's been two it's been three it's been ten it's been twenty and he is still working on those issues about bringing a lens and some understanding to what is happening in the downtown east and we've got our share of issues and he is not going to ever give up and i know that about him and that's what makes him so special as a treasure to our communities and a treasure to the garden district residents association association where he served as a president the past president and he's done fantastic work at bringing about awareness about the cultural importance of Allen Gardens. And he's been a big champion of the work that has started under the Downtown East Revitalization Strategy of how to bring new affordable housing, how to bring economic opportunities for people who are living there and working there so that when wealth comes into our neighborhoods, it will stay in our neighborhoods. And Glenn has been a big part of that. And I'm so honored that he's here and his family is here. Glenn? Please come up. doing this without my glasses and uh, I don't know where I'd be without my staff so um, I want to ask David Bruce uh, Dr. David Bruce to join me thank you good evening I like everyone else have only 90 seconds <laughs> and my boss said when you get up behind the microphone make sure you talk about the club and not me 
I work for the Good Neighbors Club. Dr. Bruno Scarsoni is the executive director. I cannot tell you because I don't have the time about how he was born in Sicily and came to Toronto via Argentina and Kentucky. What a circuitous route and he brought his own internal multiculturalism to this great multicultural city of ours. I can't tell you how he is very proud of his PhD in social work and his position as an adjunct professor at the Faculty of Social Work in the University of Toronto. I can't tell you how even more proud he is, because I just don't have the time, of his beautiful wife who's taking a picture of me right now, <laughs> and his very accomplished children. I don't have the luxury of time to tell you about how he has worked in social work for 43 years, and at a time in his life when I know I'll be looking forward to a hammock and a remote control, he instead has rolled up his sleeves to tackle in new and unique ways one of the most long-standing social issues in our city, and that is the plight of homeless seniors. As the executive director of the Good Neighbors Club over the last six years, Bruno has taken an organization that had an honored history as a standard soup kitchen in the downtown east side and turned it into a multi-modal, multi-sector powerhouse of an agency where we have become at the Good Neighbors Club the go-to for our population, the older homeless guys who friends and family have forgotten. I only have time to tell you one thing, <laughs> and that is those of us who have the privilege of working with and for Dr. Bruno Scorsone are among the proudest people in the city. Dr. Bruno Scorsone. the Good Neighbors Club. We are all neighbors here tonight. Okay, recipient number 10, and then there's four more to go. Connie Langio. I know she's right behind me, probably making rabbit ears and making faces. That's right, Connie. Connie is from the Church Wellesley Village Neighborhood Association, CWNA. Somebody put in the village. Um, They've been the stewards of Toronto's main streets and they've been working with the downtown young BIA and they've been raising the bar of trying to build dynamic neighborhoods. And I can tell you that Connie has uh, been a tireless advocate for sustainable, livable, walkable neighborhoods. And I met her in 2010, and um, it was a very strange meeting, but you know, I won't, I don't have the time to tell you that story. But I can tell you that. Um, she has been tireless advocate about trying to preserve the history of our communities and she's been a champion of green spaces. If anyone's ever walked along the corner of Church and Gloucester, and, and right now you can't see it, but in the summertime you've ever admired those, those, those wonderful little community plots and you thought, who has that magical green thumb? That is Connie, on her own time, on her own dime, and just bringing us a little bit of beauty into our neighborhood and reminding us about the things that matter, causing us to take a pause, to slow down and take a look. And that's Connie. So she has been a founder of the CWNA, she's been a leader of the community, and she's here tonight. Thank you. Connie, please come here. story. It was the <laughs> <laughs> And now can you look this way please? Sure. <laughs> and look this way? <laughs> look can we bowl? We can <laughs> bowl. <laughs> Okay, so I realized that my, some of my notes are out of order, but we're okay, we're still good. Um, 
you know, I can't say enough about the next award recipient because, you know, as a, as a new counselor with with a with a dynamic young team, we come in and we don't have the we don't have the history of, of being partners with organizations that have been here for 20 years and, and we don't have a huge massive Rolodex. And so when we reach out to community organizations and they reach back and, and the way they reach back and they give so generously, it means a lot to, 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 to us. And I know that I speak for my entire team in, in our office when I can tell you that the leadership and the partnership that we have had with the Carpenters Union, Local 27, has just been fantastic. Um, they may not be living in, in our ward, um, but they're everywhere. They're at every single construction site. They're everywhere, and they've given so generously to us. And so our next award recipient goes to Tony Curry and Local 27, the Carpenters Union. I know Tony's not here, but Catherine Trickett, as well as Adam Bridgman are here. And if you were on Church Street last August or September, you would have had the privilege of sitting on their handiwork. And that's through the Church Street Park Leds. They gave their time, they gave their energy, they gave their talents. I know I couldn't have been able to build them. And they brought and introduced to us, into Toronto, the very first parklet program ever. And so that happened in War 27, and it happened with a partnership of the uh, Carpenters Union. And they were also very generous and very giving because they were able to bring apprentice to that program and so not only were they able to train people to build these wonderful parklets for us uh, those apprentices will become full-fledged carpenters and I know I've seen a lot of women in the carpentry program and I can't say that that's the same thing about every single trades but I know that the Carpenters Union and Local 27 take that very seriously and they've been able to demonstrate to that to us time and time again and of course they've been very very generous when they contributed once again the labor to build the 160 planter boxes for Celebrate Young in 2012 and they were just wonderful to work with. So I want to ask Adam and Catherine to join me and, uh, and accept this award on behalf of Tony Curry who is the supervisor and the trainer and the educator and the mentor who's not here with us and uh, accept this on behalf of the Carpenters Union Local 27. Last time I saw them, they were covered in sawdust. So I was asked to present this award because it was uh, a lot of my time spent in, in 2012 and, and an incredible project for me to be involved in. Uh, I'm Councillor Wong Tan's uh, executive assistant, but uh, what happened in uh, 2000, December 2011, Toronto Water came to our office and said, we're setting up a construction site in your ward in Allen Gardens. It's going to be a, a large water main project for three and a half years. And uh, well, you can't really do, you can't move it to any other location because it's already been decided years before you got here. So. Uh, Kristen, in her uh, great wisdom, said, well, can we at least put some art on the construction site? Um, and so they, they obliged us and they said, yeah, if you can find some artists. And the first thing that she did was turn to the agencies, the community agencies that face right onto Allen Gardens. Uh, there are three Aboriginal service agencies facing Allen Gardens, the Native Women's Resource Centre, Anishinaabe Health and Ms. Wabik Employment and Training Center. Uh, and so we contacted them and brought them together and they said, well, this needs to be really be a community project. We want to engage the artists, the Aboriginal artists that are, are working in Toronto and, uh, and bring them together. But it also has to be informed by the elders. The, it's important that we bring, to go to work, uh, bring in the elders and have them inform the project. Uh, and so that's what happened. They brought them all together. It was an incredible process of, of uh, having the elders do storytelling about teachings in, in, um, 
and about the meaning of the land and, and the water because it was a water main project. Um, and so it brought together, we had 23 artists uh, working on this through the summer, a number of other volunteers. Uh, and if you've been in Allen Gardens, there's, uh, it covers the size of, the, the square footage of it covers the size of two Canadian football fields. And there's five themes to, uh, to the walls. There's a, a, a wall uh, commemorating the missing and murdered women. One of the walls represents, it's called the Condor uh, Meets the Eagle, and is a bringing together of the North and the South nations. One that, that speaks to the teachings uh, of water. Uh, one that tells the, teach the, uh, the timeline of the earth. And, and then one that teaches, has the grandfather teachings. So some of the artists are here today, and I wanted to bring up Phil Cote, who is uh, the, um, one of the co-artistic coordinators for the project. It is not easy painting in the hot of the summer sun, and they were there. And what I saw was a coming together of community because neighbors were bringing out uh, food and snacks and, and refreshments to make sure that the artists can continue to paint throughout the summer, and it took almost a year to complete. So that's why it's 781 linear feet. If you haven't seen it, go down and see it. The water main project will be complete by 2015 and then we have to find a home for the mural. Now, does it, does everyone knows that we actually, in Ward 27, we house the Ontario Legislative Assembly, right? You know that's in our ward, yeah. right? So that's, a, that's the house of government. That is a symbol of democracy. Now, did you know that condominiums were being proposed in Yorkville that would have broken through that beautiful, iconic silhouette? Yeah, you know that, right? You've seen it. And did you know that there was an organization of, of, of community members that worked together to stop that? You all know that. Okay. Did you know who, who, who it was? Uh-uh. Okay, so tonight you're going to meet them. <laughs> so the Ontario Capital Precinct Working Group, let me tell you what they've done for us. They have set forth a gift for us in Ontario where the view shed of the Ontario Legislative Assembly is going to be protected for generations to come. You will not see condominiums popping out of there. And that is thanks to the tireless leadership and efforts of the Ontario Capital Precinct Working Group. Catherine Naismith is here, and she, along with many, many other people, but she's been a big driver, uh, helped form the Capital, uh, uh, the Ontario Capital Precinct Working Group in 2011, and that was in response to a new wave of development that just kept coming in. So you're seeing it, I see it, and uh, and there was a real risk that we were going to lose that, and uh, and I know that Catherine fought an uphill battle. Because not only did we have to contend with the Ontario Municipal Board, which is something that we all have to deal with, um, she also had to contend with city staff, and sometimes me. And, uh, and there were some teachable moments, and I'm so grateful that she persevered, because when we thought we couldn't do it, we thought we were up against a wall. After we were able to de defend it through new policy that was invoked by the City of Toronto, that policy document was then appealed to the board. I think there were 21 uh, or 14 ap um, applicants. So after all that good work, it was, it was going to be lost because the board was going to say no. And then somewhere along the way, the good graces of God turned and said, you know what, give these guys a break. And the appeals were dropped. And so we can thank Catherine and the Ontario Capital Working Group for being so, Capital Precinct Working Group for being so persistent because it was their effort and their advocacy and we are going to enjoy that beautiful historic ceremonial view shed up University Avenue for, for generations to come. So Catherine, please.
I told you we had some movers and shakers in War 27, right? So, speaking of movers and shakers, this is our very last recipient of the night. And, uh, and I didn't say them for the last, it just sort of came out that way. Um, but I want to tell you something about the Downtown Young BIA. Um, we have some fantastic business districts in, in the city of Toronto, and there are some extraordinary business leaders. Um, the BIA that represents Downtown Young has been extraordinary to work with. They have been so forward-thinking, so urbanist in their attitude, and so inclusive in their approach that I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to them. And they have been a champion of trying to bring revitalization to Young Street, which is the longest street in the world. Yeah, we get that. But it's also one of the most important cultural corridors in this city. And I think it's something that we, we need champions for. Every project needs a champion. And the BIA, the Downtown Young BIA, has been that champion. Now, the things that they are advocating for is like music to my ears. They want to build a city that's of human scale, a neighborhood that's human scale. They want to build streets that are pedestrian oriented. They want to build a cycling friendly downtown. And Mark Garner, who's the executive director, and his dynamic team are here, and they really deserve a big round of thanks because without them, we would not have this big downtown commercial champion trying to bring us livable, sustainable, walkable neighborhoods. And I can tell you that I have been witness to the, to the tenaciousness of their advocacy to making sure that they get it right and they defend the public realm and the public interest and they don't compromise on integrity and that means a lot to me, especially when I'm working with the business community. And so I want to thank them for their partnership. It's been fantastic three three years and three months. And, uh, and I want you to know how lucky we are in War 27 that we have a business community that champions neighborhoods. So downtown young BIA, Mark Garner, please come up. Photo that we take from. Yeah. Lee. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to get past the photographers. She's got to get past the photographers. One's missing. It's <laughs> 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 okay there. Why don't, why don't you come up and stand in front of the microphone? And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Okay, my turn. Okay. <laughs> Everybody being pretty. There we go. Good. Thank you. Thank you. As 14 heroes in 2014, we wanted a reason to come together to celebrate. I think that we've given you the best of our communities, and there are so many more people that we would love to say thank you to. Now, before I conclude and let you do your thing, because, you know, it's Thursday evening and you've got places to go, i got to tell you something. We would not be able to do the work that we do uh, without our communities. That is for sure. We need partnerships, and building a city is about partnerships. And I know you love Toronto as much as I love Toronto, and that is why we're here for you. But as a new councillor who's been learning on the job, and I can't say I'm new anymore, I think pretty soon i gotta re I got to hang up that rookie label, um, I have a fantastic team in my office. They have been the ones that field the phone calls when, when yes, yes, yes. They, they are the ones that field your phone calls when something goes wrong, a water main break, ice storm happens. Guess what? You're, you're calling us. We, we, we don't really climb up on those trees, but you're calling us. And, you know, the work that they do is, is, is relentless, and I can tell you that the scope of the work is, is far-reaching. Whether it's trying to make sure that a senior does not get evicted 
in TCHC housing unfairly and unjustly because the difference between them and being on the streets or being in a shelter could be just that phone call from my staff who then advocate on their behalf and they are like relentless to make sure the right thing gets done. Or if you are a business owner who has been experiencing some undue hardship because of one thing or another, they will listen to you and they have been so patient and kind and I know that you appreciate the work that they do. And so not only do I have a, have a little tiny group of an army of volunteers that really love their communities and that's why they come out to work with us, I also have five amazing staff people that keep the little engine of Ward 27 going. Because every single project that you saw tonight and every single initiative that, that was acknowledged tonight, I gotta tell you, it doesn't happen without some type of partnership at the city. So I want to acknowledge Sheila Pardo. I want to acknowledge Tristan Down Dooney, David Seymour, Molly Willis, and Melissa Wong. Of course, they're too shy to come up. David. 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 Get up there, David. Okay, we have to thank them because we're going to be cleaning up later. Um, <laughs> the work is never done. So that's pretty much the end of our award ceremony. We really want to have an opportunity to come out and say hello to you. Just touch base. So much work happens day in and day out. And I know that people don't take a, t a time to pause to acknowledge that work. And I'm really glad you're able to join us. We actually have a cake that we'd like to cut with you. So before you leave, make sure you grab a slice of this cake as it is coming out. And I wanna thank everyone for being here. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you for being our extraordinary community partners. And we look forward to building more cities, more, well, one city, but definitely more playgrounds with you and, uh, and all the other things that we do together. And that includes my friend Bruno. We're gonna be building some affordable housing. Uh, that I know in 2015. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you.